Hi, thanks for joining us for Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. My name is Gabriel. Today we want to go to 2 Samuel chapter 2. Saul has died. Jonathan has died at the end of 1 Samuel. And then we find our, and, uh, in 2 Samuel 1, David hears about it. There's this great lamentation, how the mighty have fallen. And so in 2 Samuel, Samuel chapter 2, David is going to be anointed king by the men of Judah at Hebron. In fact, in verse 4, And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. Now this is uh, interesting. A couple things. One first, it should kind of trigger something that we read back in Genesis 49.10. When Jacob calls the sons of Israel in, his sons, and he prophesies, he puts a blessing, some of those blessings almost seem like curses on him. And he gets to Judah and he says, the scepter shall not leave Judah, right? So there's this idea that Judah, and through Judah, the kingship would come. And so Judah is the first to, to align with David, who himself is of the line and tribe of Judah. Now, the other Israelites are going to rally around one of Saul's sons, a Benjaminite. This happens in verse 8. But Abner, the son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. And he made him king over Gilead, and the Asherites, and Jezreel, and Ephraim, and Benjamin, and all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was 40 years old when he began to reign over Israel. And he reigned two years, but the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. So the kingdom that has been promised to David. Remember back in 1 Samuel 16, he is anointed. God rejected Saul because of Saul's sin, because of Saul's disobedience. And he chooses for himself a king after his own heart, David. And Samuel anointed David in 1 Samuel 16. And ever since then, David is living in this already not yet anointed king, but awaiting the ultimate complete fulfillment of that promise. And here, it's starting to get closer, it's starting to get closer, but still, the kingdom is not entirely his. Judah is following him. He's reigning and ruling over Judah, but the rest of Israel is following a different king. And so, Israel is divided. I'm thinking about this and how you and I, I want to lean into the, the, the concept of already not yet. David, king, and yet waiting to be king over all of Israel. And along the way, even as he was king, we've seen how he was faithful when he had opportunities to kind of reach the kingship in his own way through the sword, that he trusted God, he sat back and trusted God, awaiting God's fulfillment of these promises in the already not yet. You and I live in the already not yet, where our king, King Jesus, has come. He lived a perfect life, never a sinful thought, never a sinful action, never a sinful attitude. There was no sin in him, innocent, perfect, righteous man, the God-man. And he lays down his life. He laid it down to take it up again. He raised on the third day, victorious, conquering Satan, sin and death, and yet you and I, we still know loved ones who go on through the way of death to be with the Lord. You know that struggle in your heart, like Paul talks about in Romans 7, the good I want to do, I don't find myself doing, but I find myself doing the very evil I hate. Right? We are set free from the, pre, uh, the penalty of sin, but the presence of sin remains, and we are struggling with the power of sin, right? We are being sanctified. We are, by God's grace, able to fight sin as two steps forward, a step back. But there's still that battle within us, the, you know, the process of sanctification, in which we are putting to death what is earthly in us and putting on 
what we should as God's chosen ones. Paul talks about in Colossians 3. And Satan, though he has been defamed, he is still a formidable foe, prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so you and I, we are to resist him, standing firm in our faith. We are put on the full armor of God that we may be able to take our stand against the schemes and the wiles of the devil. We are to, to pray for one another. Think about what the Lord Jesus said about Peter, that Satan has demanded to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail you. So you and I, we are to pray for one another. We are to pray for ourselves to keep us, protect us from the evil one. We are to put on the full armor of God. We are to fight indwelling sin. We are to confess sin when we fall. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Put these enemies to death once and for all. The already not yet. Jesus reigns. He is victorious. But in these final days, as we await for Jesus to come, these uh, stragglers remain. These wicked men, like we see back in the Old Testament, though David is king, there are men who follow the wrong king. And so as we wait the Lord Jesus' appearance, we pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Let us be found like David, faithfully trusting the Lord, for we live by faith and not by sight. God's blessings on you today.